Yes. Let us make a short prayer. Just focusing the most holy trinity in you. Let us make a short prayer. Oh, holy trinity dwelling in our heart. We thank and praise you. Oh, Holy Spirit, our helper. Oh, Jesus, you said when he comes, he will teach you everything. He will teach you everything. Oh, Holy Spirit, now, now we pray, Holy Spirit, teach us, Lord. Teach us what you want to teach us. We are always humble and recognize that our knowledge is not enough. What we know is only a drop. What we do not know is an ocean. Oh, Holy Spirit, you are the principal agent of the mission. Holy Spirit is the worker of the mission. The mission is the work of the Holy Spirit through Jesus Christ and empowered by the Father God. Oh, Holy Spirit, we adore you, Holy Spirit. We adore you, Holy Spirit. Oh, Holy Spirit, you are the life giver. You are adored with the Father and the Son. You are consubstantial with the Father and the Son. You are glorified with the Father and Son. You worked in the incarnation to bring down the eternal word the Son of God to Son of Man. That is a great work. And you anointed Jesus and he did the mission and he accomplished the salvation and you worked in the resurrection. You worked in the ascension and you worked even in his second coming. With this understanding, we submit ourselves to you, Holy Spirit. In these days, work in us to be your powerful instruments to spread the fragrance of Christ. Amen. A word of God now I am getting is Jesus, after the resurrection, came, John chapter 20, verse 19. John chapter 20, verse 19. On the evening of the first day of the week, when the door, doors were locked, that's important. The doors were locked. Let us focus on that word. The doors were locked. There was, there, there was no welcome. <laughs> there was no welcome for him. The doors were locked. When the doors were locked where the disciples were, where the disciples were for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. 
Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. Receive the Spirit. He breathed on them. So this was the first, first encounter after the resurrection. After the resurrection. Now, I know many of you are very curious, what is this workshop? What is this workshop? <laughs> so, surely we will come to the practical aspect of evangelization. How to evangelize effectively, easily, <laughs> led by the supernatural power of God. That is our aim. So, first one or two sessions, I have to make you to activate through the Holy Scripture certain hidden mysteries which will help us to activate this power within us. And then we will have group dynamics where you will find extraordinary way the power is manifesting in each one of you. That is what meant by workshop. So, before we enter into that supernatural manifestation in you and you will be ministering to one another, there you will understand how to evangelize through the power of God, power of Christ, power of Holy Spirit. Of course, you are all already in such a great mission for many years. Therefore, the Lord will tell you, well done. You who are faithful in little things, I will make you responsible for greater things. Therefore, he said, take the one who had five talents, take ten more or five more. That is our event here. You who have been working in evangelization, the Lord is surely pleased with you. Therefore, he has called you to, for a promotion and to give you additional gift and charisms and anointing. It is often to be done. We should not be like a stagnant, but we must be always in fire, fire. And incidentally, what Bishop was talking about was the passion of evangelization. Yes, is a, a topic which the whole Catholic Church is now reflecting. Pope Francis has given a series of general audience talk with this same subject, passion for evangelization. Passion for evangelization. So I am not going to quote much from the Pope's teaching. We will go more into practical. But, of course, you must sometimes listen to the Pope's teaching on passion for evangelization. Okay, now coming to this scripture point. This is very much relating to our present scenario in Northern India or in the middle. We have various types of fear. We have various types of fear. We cannot evangelize with the fear. Now I don't mention what are the fears we have. So this situation of the apostles were that. They were having fear. Their fear was like Jesus was crucified, the Jews may crucify them. 
they were in fear and they were also the one who are called but some of them even denied jesus they all left him when the time where they supposed to have been with him they left him so that is another situation they had promised to be with him but they abandoned him and suddenly so they closed themselves and the room was locked locked suddenly a person is appearing inside the room so shall we imagine that scene so peter might have asked hey who opened the door i told you not to open the door who opened the door so everybody said i did not open thomas no i did not open john no i did not open then how could he come in everybody i don't know how he came in can you understand that feeling <laughs> just imagine that situation we are all inside a room and the door was closed locked but suddenly somebody comes in so slowly they might have got more fear <laughs> first of all more fear they wanted to get rid of their fear so they closed the door now come somebody inside while the door was still closed so first experience might have been their fear might have exaggerated gone higher and now when they looked closely to this person that person is showing them showing them what is it showing showing them the wounds of his passion now slowly they are recognizing hey hey this is our lord <laughs> our lord they cannot realize it two days back this lord was beaten up scorched and they have killed him and that god is alive and in front of them <laughs> their excitement and fear was mixed together and slowly there became a joy and then he said the first word after the resurrection peace be with you we can know this is the last word jesus also spoke to them after the after the last supper discourse my peace i give to you now again he says peace i give to you and he is showing the signs yes i am the same one whom the people killed crucified but i am alive i am with you peace be with you again and then he says a very important point which is the mission mission that is the mission of us also as my father sent me so i send you as my father sent me so i send you but then what is needed how god the father sent jesus through the holy spirit he was conceived through the power of the holy spirit he was baptized in the power of the holy spirit he did all the preaching through the power of the holy spirit 
and he is risen through the power of the holy spirit therefore you cannot do anything even if i send you without the holy spirit so he said receive the holy spirit and he breathed on them now this breath must be understood in comparison with the first breath when god created adam and eve or adam god breathed them giving the life giving spirit but in spite of that breath adam committed sin and gone away from the divine divine nature and fallen he has fallen so that is why in the psalms chapter 104 psalm 104 30 says psalm 104 30 psalm 104 30 When you send forth your spirit they are created and you renew the face of the earth When you send forth your breath your breath so the first breath through which they are created and now there is a second breath through which you renew the face of the earth our task of evangelization is not only to renew the humanity but to renew the face of the earth so these are the some important uh, conviction we need we need to be more powerful evangelizers that's why saint mark ending the gospel with go and proclaim to all creation all creation not only to the human being our task is to evangelize or to renew the face of the earth face of the earth so we will come back to that so when jesus is breath he breathed on them and that breath when they were inside is a very important breath only to the apostles only to the apostles that is a breath which is the real core of the power to begin the church to begin the church that jesus said i am the vine you are my branch which he spoke on the last supper discourse that was only to the apostles when he instituted the sacrament he instituted the sacrament he instituted the priesthood all that has a very different meaning than the general pentecost so pentecost time this breed become more wider to all to all to the whole all flesh prophecy of joel is fulfilled in the prophecy of joel says in the last days the spirit will come upon all flesh do you believe this we think oh i am a baptized person the spirit is working only on baptized persons or oh, you are not a christian no spirit is not working i am a baptized person i am a religious i am a priest it is working only me that is not the understanding 
So these are the very important convictions we need. The spirit is working. Like the Holy Trinity is working in all flesh. So now I would like to invite your attention to Domino Vivificandum, that is one of the great teaching of Pope John Paul II on Holy Spirit. In that paragraph 50, 51, 52, you just note down and later on you can read it, wherein John Paul II says, Saint John Paul II, Pope John Paul II says, the greatest work of Holy Spirit was in the incarnation of, that the Son of God becomes Son of Man. When the angel said, you will conceive and bear a son, you must call him Jesus. Mary asked him, I don't know a man. How this will happen? Now the angel said, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. So John Paul II in another teaching says, here exactly Mary understands and for all of us understand, Holy Spirit is a person, person of the third person of the Trinity, consubstantial with the Father and the Son. The Holy Spirit will come upon you. So, life-giving action of Holy Spirit. So we know the Holy Spirit, we believe in Holy Spirit who is the giver of life, consubstantial with the Father. He is worshipped with the Father and the Son. Giver of life. Vivificando. Dominum vivificandum. God, Lord and giver of life. So what is the giver of life? Whose life he has given? First, first giving of life was the word of God, the son of God becomes son of man. Through the working of the Holy Spirit. Hold on to that. And John Paul II said, in this incarnation, when we know that Jesus, he assumed the flesh, assumed our flesh, assumed our flesh. So that is in Catechism, paragraph 520, 26, 526 says, 526, five hundred and twenty six Catechism, CCC 526, to become a child in relation to God is the condition for entering the kingdom, to become a child. For this we must humble ourselves and become like little, become little. That's the important task. We have to humble and become little. Even more to become children of God. We must be born from above or born of God. Now very important teaching. Only when Christ is formed in us will the mystery of Christmas be fulfilled in us. What is the mystery of Christmas? We celebrate Christmas. We see the, in the crib a little child is what is it? Who is he? There is a mystery. Christmas is a mystery. We have already one month early we start having singing carol, singing, 
packing presents to give everybody is focusing on gift <laughs> they will even say father ji in this christmas you should give me this gift uh, okay okay sister ji what gift you are going to give in the christmas i want this even people are nowadays asking i want a iphone <laughs> all are interested on gift but what is the greatest gift the greatest gift is christ himself so the situation has come because of our consumerism because of our secularism we have gone away from the greatest gift to some temporal gifts so now this sentence please write it down christmas is the mystery of this marvelous exchange marvelous exchange marvelous exchange christmas is the mystery of this marvelous exchange now we were talking about you have to become a fragrance of christ how christ is not giving a spray to 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 press and you get a little fragrance then it goes away christ is giving himself and that begins from christmas so only when christ is formed in us will the mystery of christmas be fulfilled and how christ is formed in us when you believe this word christ is the mystery of this marvelous exchange Uh, in since i am working among germans it's a very dear word a wunderbar austausch some of you are learning or learned german can note down wunderbar austausch austausch means give and take exchange means give and take you give rice and you take vegetable give and take what is it called ba batter eh uh, what is that ah uh, i am not <laughs> i forgot that a barter system okay it is a exchange can you believe this what type of exchange now i read further this is from 208 in same oh marvelous exchange man's creator has become man born of the virgin we have been made shares in the divinity of christ who humbled himself to share our humanity that is the exchange he assumed our human nature and what did he give he gave his divine nature this we have in our zero malabar liturgy after the yeah, after the after the uh, institution of the word institution prayer we have this prayer oh lord no this is institution prayer epitr
sorry. Hmm. Yeah, I got it now. Hey, Prabhu Tera, Adesh and ah, that is institution prayer. No, I see. हे प्रभु तेरे आदेशानुसार हम भी तेरे हम भी तेरे दुर्बल दीनहीन सेवक तेरे सानिध्य में एकत्रित हुए हैं तूने हम पर इतना उपकार किया है जिसका उचित धन्यवाद देना हमारे लिए असंभव है तेरे ईश्वरीय जीवन में हमें सहभागी बनाने के लिए दरिवार करेक्ट तेरे ईश्वरीय जीवन में जीवन में हमें सहभागी बनाने के लिए तूने हमारे मनुष्य स्वभाव अपनाया तूने हमें अपनाया तुम्हें हमें पतितों का तूने हम पतितों का उद्धार किया हम मृदगों को जीवित किया हम पापियों को पवित्र किया हम अपराधियों को मोचित किया तूने हमारी बुद्धि को आलोकित किया शत्रुओं को पराजित किया और हमारे दुर्बल स्वभाव को अपनी प्रचुर कृपा से अलंकृत किया है तेरी सारे कृपादानों तथा अनुग्रह के प्राप्त हम तुझे प्रति हम तुझे धन्यवाद स्तुति करते हैं सो दिस इज एक्सैक्टली द आउटोस एक्सचेंज लेट अस बिलीव दिस it is not easy to believe we cannot imagine that our our human nature is exchanged by god's divine nature not only believe this had to experience this that is our heart of the faith that is christmas christmas means christ took our human nature so it's very detailed given in our liturgy and he took our human nature and he gave his divine nature through eternal word through holy spirit through sacraments in so many ways so we have to understand here referring to jesus says as my father sent me so i send you father sent me in place of god i am but he made me a human being so first of all <laughs> first of all uh, you should not mind when my some of my expressions may be uh, there is no other way so some expression may be a little painful but this is the expression st john paul ii has given on priestly formation and formation of sacred uh, religious he says in pastorus dabo obis that is a apostolic teaching on priestly formation maybe you might have learned that in seminary time and afterwards it is kept somewhere <laughs> so pastorus dabo obis 
as St. Paul says, you have to become another Christ. So, John Paul II says, first of all, human formation. You should become a good human being. You should become a good human being. So, to become a good human being, we need to be, we need, we cannot do it with our own power. We cannot do with psychology. We cannot do with philosophy. I am just making little humorous aspect in order to make it more <laughs> joyful. When I was uh, preaching in Bangalore to a retreat on priests and religious, there were nearly 2,000 of them. Uh, yes, 20 or 25 years back. So at that time, a sister came to me, Thomas Paul, I am already retired. I am 65 years old. But my generalate from Rome is asking me to come to Rome to learn about evangelization of India. To learn Hinduism to evangelize India. To Rome. What should I do? <laughs> I, sister, why are you asking me? I will not say anything. You must do what your superiors say. But one thing I know, I have not learned Hinduism to evangelize the North India. The way the Lord told me straight, speaking to Hindus and Muslims, the first proclamation I could do it the Holy Spirit led me to say, when I had an experience in a train, the Holy Spirit came upon me and the Holy Spirit started speaking to me and I was manifesting <laughs> a very powerful way, speaking in tongues, something like that I am shouting in the train. <laughs> So the people, passengers were uh, astonished. What happened to this man? After some time, somebody came to me and said, Are bhai sahab, theek hai kya? Aapko kuch hua kya? Nahi, kuch nahi hua. Mujhe Prabhu Isa Masih ka anibha hua hai. Pavitra Atma ka anibha hua hai. Then that man asked, who is that Jesus? So he is sincerely asking. Sincerely asking. Who is this Jesus you gave, you met now? So the one who was behind him said, Are Oto Isai Onka Bhagavan hai. Tomare sat koi sambadhanai. Hat jao. That is the God of Christians. You have nothing to do. Move. And then it, it gave me such an such a inspiration to say, no, no, no. Don't say Jesus is a God of Christians only. And I don't know who is speaking. I never said up to that time anything about Jesus to anybody. Holy Spirit is speaking through me. Jesus is not a private property of Christians. When Jesus born, there were no Christians. When Jesus died, there were no Christians. He came for the whole humanity. He came for you. You may be Hindu, Muslim, Sikh, Punjabi, Parsi, but He loves you. He came for you. Again, I fell to repeat this word 
Jesus is not a private property of Christians alone. That point touched them. They wanted to listen more about Jesus. And in the train, in the crowded train, I am first time speaking more than 45 minutes. I spoke in Hindi. In fact, I never knew how to speak in Hindi. And I never familiar with the Hindi Bible so much. But I began to speak in Hindi. Then I realized the working of the Holy Spirit. Even the, 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 the content, what I spoke, is never articulated in my, in my human intelligence. Not at all. And that become one of my key message into North India. One day when I was in a minor seminary, uh, not minor seminary, in a philosophate, I think, somewhere in, maybe in Rajasthan, Rajasthan. As I was, in, I was invited to speak to the seminarians, so as I went there, one of the brothers came and he held my hand. Are bhai sir, aapko malum hai? My aapka cassette se paida hua hai. I am born from your cassette. Cassette means the audio tape which used to be there earlier. My aapka cassette se paida hua hai. I could not understand. Uh, I said, what is the meaning? What is that? Bhai sir, कई साल के पहले एक नन सिस्टर मुझे एक कैसेट दिया ऐसे एवेंजुलाइजेशन सिस्टर लोगों का काम है ये कैसेट बांटना प्रेयर किताब बांटना ये कैसेट मुझे दिया माये उधर घर में जाके रेक दिया लेकिन रात को मुझे कोई मुझे बोलने लगा माये कोई आवाज सुनने लगा Oh, suno, oh cassette, suno. Play that cassette and hear. In the night, I began to hear a voice, put on the cassette and listen. I'm not able to get sleep. Then I put on the cassette in a cassette player and I began to listen. Oh cassette, aapka tha, brother Thomas Paul ka waaj tha. Uzbem, Brother Thomas Paul, it was the voice of Thomas Paul. It was a preaching of Thomas Paul. In that, it begins with, Kya tumare maabab tumare liye kun bahaya kya? Is your father or mother has shed their blood for you? No, but Jesus Christ has shed his blood for you to save you. Do you know him? प्रभु ईसा मसीह तुम्हारे लिए अपना कून बहाया क्या तुम उसको जानते हो ये तो बात बहुत गहराई है इस इस समथिंग वेरी इम्पोर्टेंट एंड ही हैड टू लिसन दैट कैसेट होल्ड नाइट अगेन एंड अगेन एंड अगेन देन इन द मॉर्निंग ही वाज सर्चिंग फॉर दैट सिस्टर बट शी वाज नॉट फाउंड सो he went to the parish priest and explained his experience and he said, I want to know about that Jesus who shed his blood for me. Then the parish priest gave him a Bible and told him to read Mark's Evangelium, Mark's Gospel. And then he began to have such a strong faith and he felt I should become a priest. So then he received baptism and he is now studying in the seminary. That is why he said, My apka cassette se paida hua hai. So, what I want to say, you don't have to learn Hinduism, you don't have to learn Buddhism or Muslimism to preach Jesus. 
but you have to learn really who is Jesus and you have to experience that Jesus it is not simple experience it is Jesus himself lives in us that experience that experience that is the key for evangelization so St. Paul's teaching says it's not me Christ lives in me which Christ now we must understand Christ lived in 2000 years back in Palestine 33 years he lived there are we following that Christ yes but that Christ is lived in 33 years is not the big thing so in <laughs> everybody is coming in uh, John chapter 8 58 Jesus spoke to the Pharisees when they were telling we are children of Abraham Jesus said I am before Abraham John 8 58 I am before Abraham and it is then they become angry you are not even 50 years old and you say you are before Abraham and they took stones to kill him so we have to understand what means that I am before Abraham this is the same word used I am this I am who I am and wherever Jesus said, I am the resurrection, I am the life, I am the living bread, all that I am is Jesus himself who was preeminent, who, was, who is Alpha and Omega. So in, in, uh, in Revelation, in Revelation chapter 1, Revelation chapter 1, 8, Revelation chapter 1, 8 says, I am, Revelation chapter 1, 8 says, I am the Alpha and Omega, says the Lord God, the one who is and who was and who is to come the almighty so whenever we think about Jesus now our our thinking must change that Jesus is alpha and omega that Jesus is the one who is the one who was I'm the one who is going to come. So in Sam, Sam 90, in Sam 90, I sing that in Malayalam. Anadi mudale, ananda davare, avidan devaman. From eternity to eternity, he is God. From eternity to eternity. So who is Jesus for us? Jesus for us is not only the one who lived 33 years, who incarnated, who took our human nature, who died, who suffered, died and resurrected. That is not enough. We should know that Jesus is from eternity to eternity God. What is the Psalm number? Number 90. Psalm 90. Psalm 90. Psalm 90. Lord, you have been our refuge through all generations. Before the mountains were born, the earth and the world brought forth from eternity to eternity, you are God. 
A thousand years in your eyes are merely a yesterday. Understand it. Understand. A thousand years in your eyes are merely a yesterday. You see the words a yesterday. But human you but humans you return to dust saying return you mortals. So here the first return is you return to earth. But then there is another return from the earth to the glory. Shall you all sing it again? Sing that. Tu hi deta he tan ko puna jeevan. You give resurrection to our body. What is that resurrection song means today for us? That is the highest proclamation. That in the second coming, we are whole liturgy is focusing on his second coming. Now we heard about incarnation. Now in Latin Mass, the preface of incarnation is like this. The two comings, the two, two advents. O Lord, through your first advent, you prepared for your second advent. <laughs> How can we have the second advent unless we have the first advent? So even there, the second advent is focused. So in the, in the Oriental liturgy, the whole liturgy is focusing on Christ who comes again. As Jesus himself preached in Matthew 24, 27. Matthew 24, 27. That is why we are turning toward the east. What is that? Matthew 24, 27. 24, 27. For just as lightning comes from the east and is seen as far as the west, so will the coming of the Son of Man. So will the coming of the Son of Man be. So that is why we turn to east. We are always looking for the coming, the second coming. And the first coming is for the second coming. So what happens in the second coming? What happens in the second coming? This is something many people don't know. We hear so many WhatsApp messages. The world is going to end. Such a war, such a calamities, such a tsunami, it is all the signal of the world is going to end. So people are thinking this structural world is going to collapse. The humanity will be finished. These are all completely false, false, false. So we must know what is mean the end of the world. The end of the world means in catechism. So these are the things we should not make any statement because of anybody's information. We must know from the teaching of the church. Catechism of Catholic Church must be, is a very good reference point for us these days. We don't have to refer many other books, only one book. And so, after Second Vatican Council, the Council Fathers later on thought all that findings and the beauty of the Second Vatican Council must be given to the people 
For that we have to make a reference book. That is the Catechism of Catholic Church, which is also known as Apostolic Constitution. See this. That is written, Apostolic Constitution. It is also known as Fide Depositum, Deposit of Faith. I tell you, uh, this is introduced in 1992. Very soon I got this teaching. So now nearly 30 years, 25 years so strongly I am working with this teaching. That has helped me greatly, greatly. So we have to preach something not from our head, not from our mind, but from the teaching of the Holy Catholic Church. And then we have such a strong power. We feel we are connected with such a power. So in this teaching, it is not only Jesus' own teaching, it is a holy tradition. It is the liturgy began from the very first beginning of the church. It is the teaching of the early church fathers. It is also from the teaching of the many, many ecumenical synods, sorry, ecumenical uh, what, councils and from the many doctrine of the church and the doctrines of the church. So, about Jesus' second coming, 1042, it's very beautiful to understand this in connection with who is this Jesus. What will he do? We sing, Tu hi de ta he tan ko punar jeevan. What means that? He give resurrection to our body. So in 1042 says, at the end of time, the kingdom of God will come in its fullness. After the universal judgment, the righteous will reign forever with Christ here it is one word, very important word. Glorified in body and soul. Glorified in body. How do our body is glorified? Now we heard in Psalm 90, you go to the dust. Man, go back to the dust. That is the whole humanity will become what, uh, what word I should use? Decayed. Decayed. Can you imagine the whole humanity through the natural death who's joined with the soil decayed? But in his second coming, the whole humanity will resurrect. <coughs> this is what every day we are proclaiming at the credo. I believe in the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. We say this. I believe in the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. And we continue. What do you mean by resurrection of the body? Now, this is the fragrance. The fragrance is very much related to the glory. <laughs> I so thank you, Bishop, you took that word, the fragrance. Fragrance. That is why we have the incensing. Incensing. You imagine that turible? In that turible, turible, there is a bottom portion and top portion. That bottom is the earth, top is the heaven. 